is going on everybody we are officially live i was actually probably got my like what's going on face when this uh first happened because it kept uh loading for the going live and then all of a sudden it went live and i wasn't prepared i was just like so uh yeah this is kind of a random impromptu thing uh, i know everybody asks me when am i going to do these live streams i don't really have a set time i know i should do like a set schedule and let everybody know in advance so people can tune in if they're interested but it's usually just a spur of the moment thing, which is what this is now. So uh, I just wanted to get on here real quick. Um, I'm gonna, after this live stream is over, I'm gonna watch a few movies and I kinda wanna get your input on that as well. So there's some few people over here. What's going on? Um, Arts Toys, how are you? It's good to see you. I always, that's one of the things that I like. There's certain people who are, uh, you know, continuous um, commenters and viewers and stuff like that. So I feel like I know you guys a little bit. I feel like there's, you know, that connection there. And then it's cool also to see people um, that are new too. Uh, what's going on? Ben Ashby from uh, Northern Ireland. Cheers. That's one of the things I also love too, that there's people from all over the world viewing and talking on here. I just think that's awesome. YouTube is a great platform for that, which none of us really had before. What's going on, man? <laughs> My name, you changed it up. Um, but I remember because you had the same name as somebody that I used to know from high school. So I always remember you from that. Scrolling with the homies. I love when you say that, man. <laughs> Thank you, Jason Voorhees. I appreciate that. Denmark, awesome. Five beers up. I just uh, started a beer right here. Krabby's ginger beer again, which I was drinking the last time uh, that I did this uh, live stream. I actually had just came back from the liquor store and picked up some stuff. At uh, Cedar Grove Wine and Liquors. It's right around where I live. And, you know, they're nice. They're the ones that I actually got the uh, the Bud Light chair from. Let me uh, turn on the light. Let there be light. It's got to take a minute for set on. But there's the Bud Light chair, which I was able to get for free. It's a reclining chair. And it's friggin' awesome, actually. It reclines all the way back. I've fallen asleep in there. You got two cup holders. It's pretty quality. I wish it didn't say Bud Light. Uh, but I like the NFL logo too. But uh, yeah, so I got that for free at that liquor store. So I feel like, you know, I got to show them some love and loyalty. They've been good to me. I got to be good to them as well. Uh, they've got a good make your own six pack selection too. Uh, they have some competition though. There was a, what is the Bottle Republic that opened up down the road and they have like a lot of tastings and stuff. They have a much bigger selection, but you don't get that. I feel that friendly, you know, like a friendly face. When I go in there, they all say hi, they know me. You know, I've been going there for a while now. Um, but yeah, it's so cool. Like people from Denmark, Ireland, you know, Scotland, from uh, I think Bolivia somebody was too. People from Australia, you know. So I just think that's really cool. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you as well. That's one of the things like I, I want to say like 15 years ago saying Merry Christmas was okay. Now it's all Happy Holidays. And that's still – I'm adjusting to that. I mean I was raised Catholic. Uh I don't really practice as much now, but I, I like to say Merry Christmas. I celebrate Christmas, so yeah. How's it going, Johnny Moynihan? How are you? Sean Boy from Glasgow. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, uh, Edinburgh. Edinburgh's uh, Krabby's right there, so I don't know. I, I feel like a connection to that. That's where I guess ginger beer originated. And I love ginger beer. I know I'm in the minority. I know most people don't like it. It's an acquired taste, but I love it. I like um, a lot of things that people don't normally like, ginger beer, and I like violet chips. If anybody had violet chips, I love those. And then uh, black licorice, which I can't have black licorice anymore. It's not good for your heart. Uh, favorite Christmas horror movie, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I absolutely love that one. Uh, there was a one recently that I really enjoyed, uh, Red Christmas. It's an Australian one with Dee Wallace. It's not perfect. It's more for like low budget horror fans, but I really enjoyed it. And I rejo uh, enjoyed the reveal of the killer at the end. I thought that was really cool. Uh, JJ Kristen said almost one o'clock there. <laughs> I feel bad because of the time change, uh, time difference, uh, time zones and stuff. But uh, thank you for always tuning in. I remember somebody was saying it was like five o'clock last time I did one of these live streams. What's the deal with the new Friday the Thirteenth box set? Are the versions getting? Are they going to be uncut versions? Uh, I think it's the one from uh, Paramount, right? It's not in the ten. Um, I don't know uh, if all of them are uncut, but I am pretty sure uh, Jason Goes to Hell is not uncut. I think the only uncut one you can get from that is like the old school DVD, which is so weird to me. I don't know why um, that one. I you know I know it's not it's probably the least best maybe of all of them, but I still enjoy it. Uh, scrolling through, 
Yeah, so what's everybody up to tonight? Uh, yeah, as far as Christmas horror movies, I need to do a top 10 Christmas horror movies list. I feel like there's not a ton of great ones, but there's been, I feel like in the past few years, there's been a slew of them coming out, but most of them really haven't done it for me personally. Um, I do like Red Christmas, which was a recent one. I know everybody and their mother has been talking about Better Watch Out, but big shout, shout out to uh, David Graham. I know you... I know there's another name, but you have like three names in there, but I, he's, he really pushed me to see it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't like it quite as much as he did. I still think it's a decent one worth checking out. To me, it's like Home Alone meets American Psycho. Um, I like the little bit of a twist there, but I kind of wanted more from it. But I know everybody and their mother's been talking about that movie. We've seen so many people post about it. Uh, so I, you know, check that one out if you're into it. I like Krampus a lot, a newer one. Um, but yeah, there's Silent Night, Daily Night is probably my favorite. Santa Slays is, is like such a cheesy one with Bill Goldberg. Um, but there's, there's a few decent ones out there, but I've seen a ton of terrible Christmas horror movies, like low budget ones. Uh, I had a company over and we watched Duel. Yeah, I haven't seen that since I was like a kid. Uh, that needs a, I don't think that has a Blu-ray release, uh, but it definitely needs one. Uh, what do you think about Scream Factory releasing The Strangers? I feel like Scream Factory... It would be nice for you to release movies that don't have a Blu-ray release instead of releasing movies that have had like four Blu-ray releases already like Carrie and you know The Strangers and all these different ones that have uh, had so many Blu-ray releases already. Um, I, I'm not going to buy the that Strangers one because I already have The Strangers Blu-ray and that looked fine to me. And uh, you know you're doing a new commission artwork. You're doing you know putting the word collector's edition on there. It's gonna be a slip cover. People are gonna buy it up. I'm not a big fan of the strangers in general. Um, it's grown on me a little bit, but I still think it's a bit disappointing. I prefer the French film Them. Same kind of concept, but way better developed and just better execution, better suspense, atmosphere. I like Red Christmas. All right, great to see more love for Red Christmas. Again, I feel like it's more geared towards low-budget horror fans, but I just thought it was still enjoyable. I, one thing I think for Red Christmas, I think the director of Red Christmas has a foot fetish, like Tarantino-esque, because I noticed there were so many shots where it showed like the bottom of the shoes or the or somebody's feet or something like that. And I know one of the cut scenes was um, the one guy like giving the girl a foot massage on the sofa. I was like, yeah, this is totally Tarantino-esque right here. <laughs> But overall, I still thought it was a really good film. Um, I thought there's a couple of criticisms I have for it, but I really enjoyed it for what it was. One of the better uh, Christmas horror movies. I definitely prefer it over Better Watch Out. Um, oh, yeah, somebody else just said uh, they watched Better Watch Out and they said it was, eh, it was okay. Um, yeah, no, I definitely I agree. I completely agree with that, Nicholas. Um, I felt the same way, but a lot of people love it. Um, I didn't think it was terrible. I just thought it was about average for me. Didn't live up to the hype. I think it's one of those things I heard so much buzz for it. Uh, I was just expecting more from it. Um, Jason Voorhees says the set is only uh, one through eight. So thank you for that. I wasn't aware. I just, I didn't look too much into it. I knew it was coming out, but I didn't uh, look into it. Uh, what do you think of the new Day of the Dead Bloodline trailer? I actually, I don't know if I saw that one or not, actually. I got to... I gotta look into that because I've seen like a whole bunch of trailers recently. I'm not sure. Yeah, Linnea Quigley. Oh, that scene was like probably one of my favorite scenes. There's so many. Yeah, Punish, Naughty. I love Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's funny because I have the previous Anchor Bay uh, releases for the Blu-rays. And I have two copies and they're both signed. But they're signed like one, like uh, on the front cover of one has two signatures. On the front cover of the other one, there's one signature and one in the back. So I've always debated about like which one I should keep, which one I should get rid of. And I'm like so finicky about that. So I still have both of them. And now there's like the new Scream Factor release, which I do want to get. Um, that is one where I feel like the transfer could have been better. I've heard the transfer is supposed to be better. I like the newly commissioned artwork for it. All of that. That's one of those ones where I think the old school artwork, it's like a classic movie poster for Silent Night, Deadly Night. All time classic right there. Reanimator is another one uh, that I feel like you don't necessarily need newly commissioned artwork because it's such amazing artwork in general. Um, have you seen Behind the Mask? Yeah, Leslie Vernon, that's another one. Um, that one, I, I think it's an interesting film. I like the concept about it. So, yeah, I mean, again, I think uh, th that has a huge fan base. So I was always surprised that I didn't have a uh, release for that one before. Yeah, Scream Factory, I mean, I like what they do, but I just want them to do more releases that for uh, films that haven't had Blu-ray releases already. Uh, for, for re reference quality 4K releases, uh, one of my favorites is The Shallows. I like Lucy um, as far as uh, the, the quality. Dunkirk for me, I think uh, one of the newer releases uh, just came out. Um, I would say that's a reference quality 4K disc. So I would definitely recommend Dunkirk. 
Um, it's not my favorite war movie. I think it's a good war movie, but for me, it just missed the emotional connection and investment in the characters. I like what they did with the timeline in certain parts too. Um, I think it's definitely a good, a really good war film. Um, I liked um, Hacksaw Ridge better. Um, I just felt more of a connection to it, but very well shot. The cinematography was amazing, and uh, it looks phenomenal in 4K. Uh, I picked up a bunch of the, the Nolan films from 4K. The only one that I don't have now is The Prestige, which is my favorite. Christopher Nolan movie. Let me know where your favorite Christopher Nolan movie is. In fact, the video right before this, I did my 4K Ultra HD pickup where it was like 18 4K titles. Uh, Brain Scan. Heck yes. I love Brain Scan with uh, Edward Furlong. It's funny. I used to have the DVD for it and I, don't, I lost it, I guess, or misplaced in a move. But I remember the disc artwork was really cool for Brain Scan. It was like one of the better uh, DVD artwork uh, for the disc. So I would love to see Brain Scan uh, get a um, Blu-ray release. Absolutely. Bitcoin Massacre? I'm not even aware of that. Um, that's interesting. I kind of want to... I know there was a movie called Bitcoin Heist, but I didn't know about Bitcoin Massacre. I kind of want to check that out, actually. Um, yeah, 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 Interstellar absolutely is up there, too. Um scrolling through all hollows eve and you're i'm glad you enjoyed all hollows eve now there's actually two films with the same like i think similar name there's like one's hollows eve one all, all hollows eve the one with art the clown is the one that i love and that's getting he's getting a new film called terrifier and all hollows eve was actually kind of based on the short film terrifier but now terrifier is getting a full feature length film and for me art the clown is by far the scariest clown in horror movie history i would take art the clown over pennywise any day uh, do you think Texas Chainsaw Massacre TV series will live up to anything? Can't remember if it's eight or ten episodes premieres in October of next year. I'm excited for that. I'm personally one of the few people that liked this recent Leatherface movie. I know it kind of changes the, the timeline and identity of uh, Leatherface, but uh, I think the timeline and that whole thing was already screwed up big time before that, and especially with Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. And I think Leatherface is way better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D has one of the worst lines in horror movie history. Do your thing, cuz I was just, when I heard that line, I was like, did that just happen? Is, who, who passed that dialogue Like when, the, when it was getting written, the script? I was just shaking my head on that one. Um, I'm actually looking forward to uh, Shemala Milan's uh, Tales from the Crypt series. Uh, I didn't see the trailer for it, but I, I know... Uh, I think he's a good storyteller. And I think that's like what a series like that would need. Uh, are you going to get back... Are you going to get the It Blu-ray? I am going to get the, the It... Uh, probably going to try to get the 4K one. Uh, I don't know about the Steelbook. I have to... I, I got to double check the artwork on it. Uh, yeah, Prestige. Nice. Um... Yeah, no, for me, again, The Prestige is my favorite Nolan film, so absolutely love the heck out of it. Uh, my favorite Friday the 13th, I love the original, and I'm one of the few people that really enjoy Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, but I'm, I think for me, the top, like the big three horror franchises, Halloween, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th is by far the best. They have the best sequels. Halloween, I think, is the worst uh, overall as a series and franchise. Um... Yeah, for me, uh, Halloween, uh, some of the sequels are just nearly unwatchable to me. Uh, Friday the 13th I, uh, it was by far the best, in, or in my opinion, and my favorite of the big three horror franchises. I'm not going to put in, like, you know, Child's Play, Leprechaun, or any of those kind of in there where it gets a little bit silly. But, you know, I watched uh, all the Child's Play movies again recently, and I think uh, Bride of Chucky is way better than I remember it being. And I think it's actually, that should be like a cult classic, in my opinion. That should get like a, you know, Scream Factory standalone collector's edition release. Seed was terrible. Um, but I enjoy that franchise overall. And even though uh, the recent one, Cult of Chucky, I feel like it, they, they just broke all the rules and changed everything so much. But I still liked it. And I still want to see um, what they do in the future for that. Uh, Brad, uh, hold on, I'm scrolling through the comments. You might want to wait on it. Director's Cut is coming out. I hate when they do that so much. 
where they release it and then like a few months later the director's cut with you know new additional I, I, that annoys me so much it feels like such a, like a cheap cash grab when they do that and so many especially Halloween Evil Dead how many re-releases have they been for them and they just know horror fans are going to eat it up especially for it which was super popular that annoys me so much now I I, uh, I, I didn't even know that was a Tom Cruise you're killing me <laughs> But I, yeah, what did everybody think of Mother? I asked uh, Tom Cruise that last night uh, about the thoughts on Mother. I talked about my thoughts on it on my uh, recent update, the video right before this. Uh, but for me, I was so disappointed. I was looking forward to it. I like uh, Darren Aronofsky, what he's done with his film. Requiem for Dream is an all-time favorite of mine. I love Black Swan. Um, I think he's a great director, but this one to me just was by far the worst of his films. I know a lot of people love it. It's a very divisive film. Uh, but again, I... I I loved the beginning of it. I liked the way that it was turning out. I thought it was going to be kind of like a Rosemary's Baby thing because the title screen and seemed like it was going to be kind of an homage to that. And then it went a complete left turn and all the religious symbolism and the analogy was just too over the top, too ridiculous for me. And it just felt like a pretentious art house film with a bigger budget and, and well-known stars. Um, so yeah, I was super disappointed in it overall. Um, yeah, if you see it, let me know. Again, what are your thoughts on Mother? Um, I seem to see more praise than negativity for it. I feel like I'm in the minority. Um, yeah, I'm just scrolling through. Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't like uh, Leatherface. I enjoyed it for what it was. I try to take, you got to take a look at Leatherface as like a standalone movie. Uh, that's how I try to look at it. And if you look at it that way, I think you'll enjoy it. But I think some people like before the movie even came out, just on the trailer, people already hated it and they didn't give it a fair chance. I love the directors. They did uh, the, uh, the French film in, um, uh, Inside, which is one of my all-time favorite movies and my favorite of the French extreme horror movies. They also did Livid, which I think was a, another kind of underrated uh, movie from uh, France. Yeah, I do need to get the, the Spirit of Steel book. I need to pick that up. That looks beautiful. I see tons of people posting that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre TV series is following. Yeah, I, I, all right. Yeah, for me, I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise overall, even though not all of the movies are great or even good, some of them. But uh, Stop Cry. <laughs> what am I? Oh, yeah, about the It. Yeah, I, that, it just annoys the heck out of me when they when uh, these studios do that. They know it's a cheap cash grab. You see it all the time where they re-release it, and then there's an extended edition, and there's a director's cut, and... It just it annoys the heck out of me. I know it's always been done. It's a gimmick they've you know capitalized on for ages for physical media movie fans. So, uh, did you see Jeepers Creepers three? I did see Jeepers Creepers three. It was a stealing steaming pile of poop. I was so disappointed. I was angry after watching that movie because of how terrible Jeepers Creepers three was. I love the first movie. I think the second movie is good, not great, and I think it gave more of a backstory for the Creeper, uh, which I appreciated. But Jeepers Creepers 3, it should have just been called the Jeeper Creeper Truck because the majority of the movie was about the freaking truck. It was, I, I just, somebody else needs to take over that franchise, not just because of the negativity involved with the director, but it seems like his ideas have gone way downhill. Um, tr yeah, that's true as far as the announcement. Uh, yeah, usually they, they kind of trick you on it, but I feel like a lot of people still don't know. I wasn't aware of it. I know other people in the this thing were, uh, were thanking you because they weren't aware of it too. Uh, yeah, Nicholas Wine and Refn. I'm a big fan of his for sure. Um, just wanted to say uh, good looking out on bringing the code red cut and run. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I actually picked up um, uh, cut and run recently. I got a, a show and an update. I absolutely love that film. Uh, I'm souped on that one. I didn't love the slip cover artwork, but it is, does have the reversible artwork underneath for the sleeve. But yeah, Cut and Run to me from uh, Ruggiero Diodato, who obviously did Campbell Holocaust and a lot of well-known, especially like uh, Italian kind of films like that. Uh, Cut and Run to me is a very underrated. So happy Code Red put that out for Blu-ray. Uh, Code Red is actually going to put out a lot of good films coming up. I still want to pick up a, a few from uh, Ghost Keeper is another one that I've always really enjoyed. A really good uh, snowy setting horror movie. Kind of like a supernatural effect. And uh, that's one I would recommend checking out if you're into that. Uh, I did enjoy Stranger Things. I'm going to do a follow-up video about it. Uh, because at the very first episode, uh, they're playing like Dungeons and Dragons or whatever in uh, the basement. And they have the John Carpenter The Thing post in the background. And immediately it was like, I'm going to like this show. And yeah, there's a tons of uh, homage to 80s horror movies like Evil Dead and stuff like that, uh, which I appreciate. Take care, Tom Cruise. Always good to see you on here, man. T-Money, what's up? Uh, 
Cool Runnings. Yes, I love Cool Runnings with uh, John Candy. I actually picked that up recently from the Disney Movie Club. It's funny because all those Disney Movie Club exclusive Blu-rays, I see people like flipping them on eBay for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. I'm like, it doesn't cost that much money to get the Disney Movie Club. I'm like, you might as well just do that. But I hear some people saying they just don't want to get the Disney Movie Club. I, I, I don't know. It, it's crazy to me that, that the, the markup for that is so much. Uncle Buck. I love Uncle Buck, too. That was awesome. It's been years since I've seen that one. Doesn't he make like the gigantic pancake or something like that, too? But that's such a fun one. I miss John Candy. John Candy was the man. One of my favorite, like, fat comedic actors. Um, and Chris Farley as well. I feel like they're trying to push certain uh, comedians, especially female comedians like Rebel Wilson and Melissa McCarthy. Both of them I can't stand. I felt like they were trying to push Melissa McCarthy as basically a female uh, Chris Farley for a long time, and I just thought it didn't fit. I'm not a fan of Melissa McCarthy at all. Um, yeah, terrible. I still, to this day, can't believe she got nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in Bridesmaids. Same year Jonah Hill got nominated for uh, Moneyball, which I don't think either one of those. Look at Fruit Wobbler's last comment. Let me scroll through and find that comment. Uh, did I miss that comment? Where is it? Um, Fruit Wobbler, no reboot on Tales of Too Many Rights Issues. Oh, all right. I wasn't aware of that. I thought there. I thought they were redoing that. Um, good to know. I have to look that. Look into that more. Uh, just scrolling through the comments here. Have the uh, having a beverage right there. Krabby's ginger beer. Am I the only one that likes ginger beer? I feel like it. Every time I try to introduce people to ginger beer, they hate it. But. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, exactly. She got nominated for crapping in a sink, essentially. I didn't even think she was like the funniest part of that movie at all. I, I just couldn't stand her in that. Nice tea money. Um, I am going to rock up upstairs because I want to get your guys' inputs on some movies that I'm going to watch tonight. I'm going to try to rock out and watch two movies tonight. So uh, I want your guys' feedback on that. So walk with me. Walk with me through... Uh, through my humble abode. Bam. Walking up the stairs. What movie is uh, overrated? What's in my fridge? You want to see a fr I'll show you my fridge. It's funny. I, I filmed a fridge like tour video like forever ago because that was like a thing going on for a while. And then I just never edited and uploaded it. But I'll show you what's in my fridge. There was pizza in there uh, yesterday, but I finished that pizza up. So I don't know if there's anything too exciting in the fridge right now. Here's some... Uh, English muffins, some onions, some bananas that are looking kind of grody. Here's the, the cabinets right here. We got some Pop-Tarts and oatmeal. I, I love honey. I uh, drink tea and I put a lot of honey in there usually. Uh, if I have oatmeal, I put honey in it. I love honey, I, a lot of spaghetti. Um, living that bachelor lifestyle. But uh, yeah, there's a fair amount of uh, beverages down here. And then we've got... Um, some egg whites, some tuna, some fat-free cheese right there, almond breeze milk, ginger beer. I love ricotta cheese, part skim because, you know, I'm trying to watch my figure. <laughs> um, I just picked this up. I'm going to do a beer review for Southern Tears Cinnamon Roll. So look forward to that. That was like an eight-buck bottle. Not bad for it. Southern Tears usually... You know, a little bit more expensive. Um, I tried their ginger beer, and I thought it was one of the worst ginger beers I've ever had. And the most expensive, too. And I tried this uh, cider. I'll probably do a review for it, too. I haven't done a lot of alcohol reviews lately, but uh, I don't know. I got some different uh, condiments and stuff like there. Steak sauce. I have tiger sauce, which is my favorite, like, hot sauce right there. I'd recommend the heck out of it. Um, some salsa. Different stuff. What do I got in here? Some, some old eggnog. How long does eggnog, eggnog stay? Because that's been in there for like a year now, since last Christmas. I don't know if that's still good. And then here's some more beverages. Um, onion. But yeah, different different stuff. And then we got some waffles. Um, I've never had fish dips. And somebody recommended these to me, so I was like, alright, I'll try them. But then I realized I don't have any like cooking spray. So... We'll see if that's any good. I've got some broccoli down there. So, yeah, there you go. There's a fridge tour. You, uh, you, you ask and you shall receive.
Uh, yeah, definitely check out Tiger Sauce. I love it. It's my favorite by far. It's funny, when I was uh, in my uh, fraternity days, I would cook uh, for me, my roommate, and like uh, another one of the guys, and uh, a few people sometimes, but I would make uh, like couscous and beans with tiger sauce. That was like my go-to uh, dish for everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, what is your favorite pizza topping? I got, I'll tell you what I got recently. It was a baked ziti pizza. Oh my gosh, so good. Oh, I could go for that again. It's a little bit expensive. It was 23 bucks and I gave the driver a five buck tip. So nearly, you know, I thought I was like, man, uh, darn, you know, no, nearly uh, 30 bucks for that pizza, but uh, 30 buckaroos, but it was still banging. I love uh, baked ziti in general. So baked ziti pizza, <sighs> so freaking good. I, like, I love a lot of ricotta. So usually I get uh, extra ricotta in there too. Hold on, I'm still here. Boop. And there's Wrigley. Hello, Wrigley. Hello, little man. Say hello. You're like, pet me. I don't care about these people. Just pet me. Don't lick my ginger beer, Wrigley. So let's turn on some more lights in here so I can show you the collection and show you what movies I might watch for the night. I'm going to try to watch two movies tonight. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and show you again the movie tour. Uh, I'm going to organize the whole movie collection uh, coming up in a few days. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take days to film. Uh, but here's all the horror DVDs right here. Here's just some random stuff. There's Inside, one of my all-time favorite movies, and my favorite French Extreme movie. I think it's like a Christmas one. I think it was a Christmas Eve or Christmas that it takes place. So... Just random stuff, random stacks. There's a Seinfeld set over there, some TV stuff. And then here's some random DVDs. I still have another big box of DVDs. Like Blue Chips needs a Blu-ray release. I love that film. Christmas of the Cranks. How does that not have a Blu-ray release? Um, there's a Open Your Eyes, I think, needs one, even though I prefer Vanilla Sky. Cobb needs one for sure. Love that one with Tommy Lee Jones playing Ty Cobb. Uh, Plague Dogs, I think, is getting a Blu-ray release. So I'm excited for that. I actually prefer the Alfie remake to the original. Um, SLC Punk absolutely needs a Blu-ray release. Classic right there. Above the Rim needs a Blu-ray release. So The Gift. Um, I think somebody posted there's a German release for it. I'm not sure if it's a region free or not. Swim Fan I always liked. I like the actress in here even though you know she's crazy in the movie. But uh, there's a ton of movies that deserve Blu-ray releases. The Beach is another one. Which I have somewhere over here. Oh, here we go. The Beach. Danny Boyle. How does that not, how does that not have a Blu-ray release? Freaking love that movie. But yeah, here's um all the here's some box sets and stuff down there too. The Ben Hur set, the Heather's Locker Ten, which is ridiculous. There's the GI Joe uh, complete TV um, cartoon series from Shout Factory, and then here's some Blu-rays, random Blu-rays. None of them are organized as of yet. More Blu-rays. And there's some 4K titles right there. That's not all my 4Ks. So I'm going to have to make another shelf. And I think I'm probably going to get rid of Mother. Um, I love Jennifer Lawrence. Um, but she was not enough to save this movie for me. She looked stunning in there. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I'd want to watch that movie again. Um, here's one. Here's a film company that I absolutely I love. Uh, first of all, they did some really good ones. Uh, film Movement. Um, Once Were Warriors, really good New Zealand film. And also The Quiet Earth, a post-apocalyptic uh, New Zealand film. Both of those are great, but I love that film company. Um, film Movement, they don't get enough credit. I feel like they're a little bit underrated overall. I would definitely recommend them. Um, just some random stuff right here. This is a lot of stuff. Like Here's Cut and Run, by the way. Here's the code red slip cover for cut and run, and then underneath you, uh, I switched it so you could see like some of the old school artwork right there. Michael Berryman, I actually have this poster for cut and run with uh, Michael Berryman. I uh, got him to sign that, and Willie Ames actually does some conventions now. So I really, next time he does a convention, I, I'd like to see if I can get my uh, uh, poster signed by that. But all right, so I'm thinking of these are the ones I was thinking about watching for tonight. Let me know your guys' opinion on which one. I'm going to try to watch two. I'm going to try to watch two. I'm going to give you a few choices. So give me your opinion on which one I should uh, watch tonight. Um, I know there's something else in here I wanted to watch. 
Oh, you know what? I did just pick this up too. So out of these six right here, let me know which one, which two I should watch. Victoria and Abdul with uh, Dame Judi Dench. The Apartments, a really beautiful box set from Arrow Video and part of their Arrow Academy line. The classic one right here with uh, Jack Lemmon and Sean McClain. Very uh, good comedy movie. Bad Day for the Cut, which I don't know too much about this one. It's a revenge movie. I saw the trailer. It looked very gritty and raw and dirty and atmospheric. So that's one in um, Michael Caine in Pulp, another one from Arrow Video. So there's that one. And then Phoenix Forgotten, which I've heard mixed things for, but I love kind of like alien abduction movies like that. And I was actually surprised it came with a slipcover. And then Free State of Jones. I picked this up recently. I think it was like five bucks on Amazon. So I couldn't pass it up with the digital copy. Um, essentially, it was like digital copy I sold for like two fifty. So it was two fifty for this brand new. So why the heck not? So there you go. Of those... Of those six, what should I watch tonight? The two. I want to watch two. Pulp, Phoenix Forgotten, Free State of Jones, Bad Day for the Cut, The Apartment, or Victoria and Abdul. Out of these two. Or you can give me other recommendations for movies to watch. Let me know. But uh, time for that ginger beer because I'm getting a bit parched. And thank you for everybody tuning in. 25, 26 people. Uh, Blair Witch Criterion. No, Blair Witch. No, no, there's that. That can't really be happening. Blair Witch Project. Oh my gosh, I hate that movie. For me, it's the most overrated horror movie in history. Um, let me finish this, um, I guess, movie tour as well, our movie collection overview, because that was, you know, in that room. But then I've got this room with the rest of the collection here. Uh, here's all the bust sets up at the top, and then Criterion Collection. To there, some Eureka, Twilight Time, which I need to get a new, need to move stuff around because that's all full. I have a bunch of Twilight Times in the room. Then Disney Blu-rays and um, Cool Runnings is over here somewhere. Yeah, Cool Runnings, Mighty Duck, Return of Oz, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, some of the exclusives right there. And then Obscure or Obstructed from View, there might be some obscure stuff, but there's TV shows and seasons. Uh, and then Steelbooks, a lot of Steelbooks. Uh, I was able to get this. I show this pretty much every time now. The Day of Did Arrow video steelbook signed by George A. Romero. I got this from Spider Geek, another YouTuber who I think he just he took all his videos down, sold his collection again. He's done it a few times recently. I hope he's doing well. Um, but yeah, here's some Digibooks, some Arrow video. I've got a bunch of Arrow video in the other room. I showed you a few before. There's random stuff over here. Here's a big box of comic books from when I was a kid. I might do a whole video on that coming up soon. And then here's some more random stuff right over there. Stuff I'm going to sell. And here's a bunch of random stuff all over the place. Uh, Reject Films sent me a Christmas card and the slipcover for Belco Experiment. Big shout out to him. I'm going to do another video where I show that to give him some proper props. And then over here is a big stack of Criterion Collection. Personal Shopper really surprised me. It's like a horror drama with uh, Kristen Stewart in it. Uh, but then over here is all the horror Blu-rays. And then more horror Blu-rays. There's my Anchor Bay Evil Dead 2 10 signed by Bruce Campbell. And then here's some Funko Pops. There's a Garbage Pill Kids little figures right there. Some more box sets and all kinds of good stuff in here. But yeah, Personal Shopper was great. I was actually really surprised by that one. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Um, I, I, let me scroll through the comments here because I'm sure I've missed a bunch of comments by now. Um... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've missed a bunch of comments. Hold on. Um, fan of documentaries? Yes, I love documentaries. I'll have to get back to you on the favorite, my, some of my favorites. Actually, one of my favorite movies of last year was a documentary. Uh, I can't remember the uh, PFC. It was about like a, this uh, veteran who... Um, from World War II, he goes back. He was a photographer. And all these photographs, like thousands of photographs... Uh, were just found from him and uh, he's going back to all these different places where he was fighting and stuff and talking about it. It was just a very poignant movie. Phoenix Forgotten in the apartment. Thank you. Pulp in the Phoenix Forgotten. So Phoenix Forgotten is getting a lot of choices. 
Uh, Lost Boys. I love Lost Boys. Uh, go with the apartment in Victoria Abdul. All right, a lot of love for the apartment. One movie that reminded me of Fire in the Sky. Yeah, I love Fire in the Sky. It's like the movie that creeped me out the most. I think it was like 14 when I saw it, and I couldn't watch it again for like years. Uh, the scene where he's on the, the ship and on the operating table, that freaked me out so bad. Phoenix Forgotten, A Bad Day. Okay, cool. So Phoenix Forgotten looks like it's in the big win right there. Wish you read the comment while taking a swig of your beer. The first uh, sublime spit take. <laughs> Phoenix Forgotten, uh, Personal Shopper. Yeah, Personal Shopper was great. So Phoenix Forgotten is the winner for sure. I think number two was uh, The Apartment. So I'm cool with that. Uh, when you see the big box of comics, condoms. I don't use condoms. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, man, that's a whole other funny topic recently. But anyways, greetings from Portugal. What is up? What's going on? Spider Geek lives. New video from Spider Geek? Really? Did he just put up a new video? That's awesome. It's all, you know, that's one of the things I, you know, a lot of people have been talking about what's going on with him. He's the only one that can really address that. I know he made a video a while ago. Um, I know somebody was re-uploading a lot of his videos, too. Um, but, I mean, I hope he's doing well. I think he always had great production value for his videos, What's up, Jeff Overing? So I think uh, if he does decide to come back, people will still embrace him. But um, yeah, whatever, you know, he's got to take care of himself first. That's most important. And you don't need to go through that cycle of, you know, buying a ton of stuff and then get rid of, get, getting rid of it. Just buy the stuff that you really want, that you want to keep. Um, yeah, no, Team Money, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, just scrolling through some more comments. Is there really going to be a Blair Witch Criterion? Let me know if that's real or not, because that just that upsets me on a deep level. <laughs> um, Rad, yes, I remember Rad. And then uh, what was the other? There's like another uh, Gleaming the Cube. I'd love to see Gleaming the Cube get a release. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Matt. You should um, you should uh, talk or write to Warner Brothers about that if you had a defective disc or wherever. I don't know if you got it from Best Buy or Amazon. Contact uh, contact them about it. Um, yeah, I had the uh, Cut and Run Anchor Bay DVD. I recently got rid of it because I picked up the Code Red Blu-ray. So, um, nice. I just picked up the Swim Fan. Yeah, Swim Fan I think is really good. I think that deserves a Blu-ray release for sure too. Yeah, I think I I'm pretty sure I do have that one as well. Um, Escape to Victory is that the one with is ah uh, somebody I can't remember was it Michael Caine or somebody I can't remember who was in that now if it's the one I'm thinking of. Um, what is your favorite Blu-ray in my collection? John Carpenter's The Thing is my all-time favorite movie, so that would probably be my favorite Blu-ray. Uh, not so much a fridge than a beer holder. <laughs> Fruit Wobbler, you are definitely correct on that. Um, I was the first thing that I did when I moved into this place. I was like, I, I lifted the one shelf up so I can accommodate all the beer. I was like, how did you guys live before? Um, you say Andrea hasn't lived life, but you've never had fish sticks. <laughs> Fair enough, but I have had live Christmas trees. I've carved pumpkins. I've done a lot of stuff that I always thought everybody did. And apparently a lot of girls that I know have not done those things. So, But, uh, yeah, I've never had fish sticks. Uh, I will have to do that soon. But apparently I guess you need to have, like, the, the cooking spray um, for the pan so it doesn't stick on there. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to trying it. I love fish. So, yeah. Uh, ricotta and wheat thins. I've You know what? That sounds great. I've never – I haven't had wheat thins in ages. But, yeah, I love ricotta on everything. So that sounds really good. I'll have to get some wheat thins now. Thank you for that recommendation. Uh, so I will be putting uh, Phoenix Forgotten for sure in. I, I remember watching Erie and Indiana. Heck yeah. Wow, that's a lot of memories right there. I It's uh, 41 Ronin. Yeah, bring uh, back the Keeper Toss series. I'm definitely going to be doing that. In fact, I'll be doing that soon because there's a couple ones like – there's some like mother is like one of those ones where like I love Jennifer Lawrence and I loved her in this movie, but I hated everything else about the movie except I like the cinematography, but the concept to me, the analogy of everything, the religious symbolism is just too over the top, too overt, too it's just too much for me. So that's one of those ones I'm like debating: should I keep it because I love Jennifer Lawrence and she I thought she looked stunning and I thought she was decent in that movie? Uh, should I keep it for those reasons? I, I don't know. Like it's one of those things I like, sometimes I'm torn about that. So I like your feedback on that. But I can tell you like uh, there's a few ones that I'm like going through that process, but I want to cut down 
of my collection because a as many movies have I sold, I still have a ton. Like I think I've talked about this before. In the past two and a half, three years, I've sold over four thousand Blu-rays, over seven thousand DVDs. Yet I still have a ton, and it's always a battle of room. It's an ebb and flow. Like I'll get rid of some, and then like every month I get rid of some um, ones that I just can't see myself rewatching again. And then I get new ones in all the time. So it's again that constant battle. Um, so yeah, I mean. I, I, I like your feedback on that kind of stuff, too. I appreciate it. other collectors, other movie fans to see their thoughts on it. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing the Keeper Toss coming up again. Uh, I have not seen Chopper, but I have heard about it. I, I, it's an Australian, yeah, exactly, Australian criminal. Uh, I've heard great things about it, so I definitely need to see it. Uh, I don't have an eBay store. So, yeah, no eBay store for me. Chronicle. I've seen Chronicle before. I enjoyed it. I think I thought they were going to do a sequel for it. Let Rob Zombie direct the Thing remake or get a Blair Witch tattoo. Oh, God. that's the, Those are two horrible options right there. Neither. Can I cut off a limb instead? Like, <laughs> that's, yikes. Those are two terrible choices. That's like, do you want to get uh, punched in the face or punched in the junk? Like, yikes. Um, scrolling through the comments. What are you watching tonight? Uh, it looks like I'll be watching Phoenix Forgotten. Because that's, uh, I asked you guys to vote, and Phoenix Forgotten is the, the winner right there for sure. And then afterwards, it looks like the second one was The Apartment. So I'll probably be checking out The Apartment. Beautiful box set from Arrow Video, part of their Arrow Academy line. Classic comedy with Jack Lemmon and Shirley MacLaine. So those are the two winners. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Nicholas R. Um, scrolling through. Jay, you see a new thriller. Uh, Hellraiser coming out, the new actress from Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, the new Hellraiser one doesn't have Doug Bradley. I think the one before didn't have Doug Bradley. It just doesn't feel the same without the real penhead, so it's weird. Um, I searched him, and he has a video that says Spider Geek Lives. Oh, that's cool. If it's I, I, I want to check that out now. I want to see if there's a new Spider Geek movie. I kind of want to like watch it right now with your guys like fucking feedback and stuff on it, but maybe I won't do that. That would be like a, an interesting thing, but I kind of want to get my laptop here and see if it's actually spider geek or somebody else like uploading the video hold on i'm curious though because um yeah i know before when spider geek first started out he did like action figure reviews and stuff like that so spider geek i'm gonna look you up are you spider geek lives holy moly he did he put up uh, a new video four days ago i'm back on a new channel oh he's got a new channel Let's let's see what this is. I I didn't know he did a a new channel. Oh he oh he uploaded oh holy moly he uploaded a whole, I guess he uploaded a bunch of his old videos, or are these all new? I don't remember the man vs claw video. Are these all new videos or are these old videos? Whoa! I, I this is so weird. This is there's like a dozen videos in the past couple days. Spider Geek, you're back with in intensity right here. I don't know if these are all new ones or old ones. So I'll have to look. Spider Geek is alive. Is this so? Wait, he said he's back with a new channel. Hello. Over the next few days, I'll come back and upload some of my past videos. And then I'll be taking a few months break. Okay, once I return, I'll continue with a me uh, with a new channel. May the force be with you all. So what's the new channel? What's the content going to be about? I will be, uh, I guess, checking that out. I think, again, I think Spider Geek, uh, he's done this whole thing where he's made, like, I think this is, like, the third time he's come back and, you know, you know, he's sold his collection a couple times. Um, I think, you know, we all need to take a step back and focus on ourselves and what's important in our lives. But I like Spider Geek. I think he's got great production value. So I think regardless, I, you know, of him doing that continual thing for a bit, which could be a turnoff for some people, I think he deserves the support. I think he's done some great videos, great content, great quality content. And again, the production values are, are awesome. So uh, I wish him the best. I'll definitely be checking out some of the videos. I guess these are all old videos that he's re-uploading. I love his work with the thumbnails too. The thumbnails always look on point. Um, so thank you. I didn't realize that he was, um, he had uploaded new videos and stuff. Yes, I'm definitely a Kevin Smith fan. Um, I love Clerks. I love Mallrats. I think Clerks was heavily influenced by Richard Linklater's uh, Slacker. So I think that's one that I always enjoy too. I think Slacker and Clerks are both movies. If you want to become a filmmaker, especially kind of like an indie filmmaker, that you should check those movies out for sure. Uh, Chasing Amy is one that I didn't used to like when I was a kid, but now I love Chasing Amy. Uh, Dogma I enjoyed. 
Um, Kevin Smith's last movie was horrible. Man, was that bad. Which was... I'm trying to remember what his last movie was. I like Tusk. I thought Tusk was like kind of cinema absurd. Oh, you mean Yoga Hosers. I kind of like Yoga Hosers. It was cheesy. It was... I, I don't like uh, the Johnny Depp character, though. That was killing me. But um, I, I, I don't know. I thought it was it was cheesy fun. Uh, but yeah, I love the, the Comic Book Men TV show. I think that needs a better time slot on AMC because... I wish it was a longer show, too. I wish it was an hour instead of a half an hour. And every time, like, there's been some times where it's, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. I can't stay up that late. And, you know, if I got, you know, work the next day. Because it comes on, it's Walking Dead, then Talking Dead, then Walking Dead again. And then, like, it's um, uh, Comic Book Man. I'm like, they need a way better time slot um, and a, a longer show. It's a, it's a fun show. It's awesome. Uh, it's his comic book store, which he's not always there, but sometimes he makes cameos, but he's always on the TV show. They basically do a, like a, a wrap up of uh, what happened that week at the comic book, uh, the comic book shop, Jay and Silent Bob's. Uh, my girlfriend is uh, is not here uh, right now. She'll be here soon. We'll do a Christmas video coming up. I haven't seen Logan Lucky. Personally, the trailers didn't appeal to me, but I'll check it out probably eventually. Um, scrolling through. Um, yes, I love Raid Redemption. I still haven't seen Raid Redemption 2, but I want to. But I, the first Raid Redemption movie for me is like a... I would take that over John Wick. I'll take that over pretty much any of the recent modern action movies. I think Raid Redemption is an all-time action movie classic. The Hills Run Red. Um, a friend made me watch it. Bad acting, okay premise, but not buying it. I think The Hills Run Red, I remember watching I still have that movie. I think the movie inside the movie was actually better than the overall movie. And I like the, the babyface killer look, but uh, I, I think it had a lot of issues. Uh, I think it's decent. I think it's still worth checking out for horror fans, but uh, uh, I think I want to rewatch it to see if I'm going to keep it in my collection or not. Uh, yeah, oh, man. See, I don't know how old his daughter is, uh, Kevin Smith's daughter, so I don't want to make any comments. Uh, but I, I think uh, both Johnny Depp and Kevin Smith's daughters, I think there were decent actors or uh, actresses in that role. I would like to see what they do in the future as well. She's legal. <laughs> Thanks. Then, yes, she has nice legs. <laughs> um, curtains. Yes, I love curtains. I was so happy that that got a Blu-ray release. I remember it was a, there was no release for the longest time, and I had a bootleg DVD for years. And then it was released on like a multi like um, Echo Bridge or one of those Merrimack, like one of those uh, multi-pack ones. And then... That finally got the Blu-ray release, which I was so happy. Was that I think Synapse maybe who put it out? But I I love curtains. Very underrated. I like the Hag Face Killer. It's classic. What's up, Wrigley? Wrigley's just like looking at me down here. What's up, little man? You're a good boy. That's a good boy. Yes. So yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. I wanted to make this video. That's one thing. I, I'm on here for 47 minutes. We've been doing this live stream already. I love doing these live streams. The instant interaction. It's so easily accessible because I'm using my iPhone. Um, and the thing that, that is every time is just so crazy to me. It feels like five minutes or ten minutes. And it's like almost an hour. So it, it flies like that. And I also feel like I'm like that old um, commercial, like the guy for the Matchbox commercials or whatever it was. He's like talking a mile a minute because I feel like I'm, I'm talking like crazy. Uh, very verbose. Fan, Yes, I'm definitely a fan of the, the movie. I have not seen Brick, but I've heard great things about Brick. That's what I need to see. I heard it's a darker movie, right? Uh, any new celebrity crushes? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence is a big celebrity crush of mine. Shannon Sossman's always been like probably like well not always but for a long time has been my number one celebrity crush. But she I know she did uh, some of the TV shows recently, um, and she was in Sinister Two, which was terrible. Uh, but as far as new ones, there was the girl. Oh man, what, what I watched a movie recently and she was in it. Uh, Mayhem. Uh, the girl that was in Mayhem. She was a blonde haired actress. I thought she was stunning. Uh, I can't remember her name right now, but um, she was really talented. <laughs> um, there's a ton of beautiful women out there and actresses that are, you know, I think Natalie Portman's stunning and talented and intelligent and just amazing and funny. She did that old SNL skit back in the day. I love that skit. Um, as far as the new ones, um, I like uh, Margot Robbie. I think she's very attractive and talented. Um... I stopped doing the dishes to see this. 
Thanks, man. I, I think that's so cool. I, that's one of the things I love. I love coming on here. It's what still makes this fun for me. I've been making videos on here for years, but talking to you guys, again, I love doing these live streams, the instant interaction, but uh, it, it's so much fun. One thing I, I hate is the fact when these live streams stop going live and then get posted to YouTube, all these comments disappear. And I, I wish they would keep all the comments. I don't know why they don't keep the comments on there. It's fun to see all those and like look back and you know, these funny moments. Nicholas R, you've had me cracking up a lot in here tonight. <laughs> uh, what Korean movies have you watched lately? I Saw the Devil is one that I think a lot of people consider it a horror movie. I don't think it's a horror movie. I think it's like a crime thriller. I think it's a phenomenal movie. Uh, Be Devil is one of my all-time favorite Korean movies. Um, it's a revenge horror movie. I would highly recommend that one. I did a review for it. I really want to do that review over because I don't really like the way that it came out. Um, the Wailing was another one. Um, I believe it was a Korean movie. That was probably my favorite movie of, of 2016. There's so many different layers to that movie. Um, really good uh, horror movie, but I feel like it um, it transcends genres in a way too. Um, I haven't seen The Punisher on, on Netflix. I loved... Um, John Barenthal in uh, when he played the Punisher character in Daredevil. And it's great to see him getting so much more work. I remember him from Shane and the Walking Dead, but he'd been in a bunch of stuff before that. But he's in everywhere now. But I'm definitely looking forward to the Punisher TV season or TV show on Netflix. Um, what do you guys think about Netflix? Like I binge watched Stranger Things one and two, but I kind of wish it was like every week they you know released a new episode instead of releasing it all at one time. Am I the only one that thinks that? I brought that up to other people. They're like, no, no. Um, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 I remember watching that as a kid I really haven't kept up to it I know it has a huge fan following um, I can't say I'm a, I'm a huge fan But I do appreciate it I remember watching a lot when I was a kid um, Yes Yes um, Samaro, Is that the same chick? I think that might be the same chick that was in Mayhem I could be mistaken But yeah I loved uh, her and the babysitter I thought that was a really good one too Jada Kiss and Fabulous, F A B O, <laughs> yeah man. I like uh, Jada from back in the day too. The Locks, I miss the Locks, man. Can I live? Uh, but yeah, I was. Uh, it's funny. Back in the day, I was. That's the kind of hip hop that I love. Like those old school, you know, from like the late '80s to like the late '90s were like for me the prime for hip hop. Hip hop today is just like pop music, pop music and like mumble rap. There's very, especially like the mainstream stuff. Like how many times can you say Gucci Gang in in a in, in one song and consider that an actual rap song? Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci. I want to smack the heck out of that. Ah, so yes, yeah, so the majority of it like it's just a good beats and then terrible lyrics, so much repetition, mumbling noises. The majority of these uh, famous popular uh, rappers, hip hop people now are just hot garbage to me. It's pop music. But yeah, I mean, I, I loved, especially like the old school, uh, like 90s hip hop. I grew up on that. Um, yes, it's the same chick from Mayhem. I thought so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Jeff, I appreciate that. She's she's a new celebrity crush for me, Samara Weaving. I wonder if she has any relation to Hugo Weaving. I don't know. But yeah, Samara Weaving, stunning. Loved the babysitter. Loved Mayhem. Um, I definitely want to pick up uh, the 4K Ultra HD release for Mayhem. I ended up getting uh, the DVD for a review copy. And I love the heck out of Mayhem. Um, it's not great. It also has uh, Glenn from The Walking Dead in there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was a fun ride. It reminded me a bit of a Belco experiment. Um, but I enjoyed that one. I would recommend it. It's fast-paced, action. Um, Brady, I, Bradley, what's... Yes, yes, I did. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of 80s music and movies by, by far. Absolutely. 80s, I, I mean, I love 90s as well, but as far as um, uh, music. But uh, for 80s, music and movies, I absolutely love especially for horror movies. Horror is my favorite genre. 80s horror, all the way. I love it. Um, is The Wailing a movie that starts out as if it's a comedy? Yeah, it's, it's a good genre blend, uh, DVD jam. It kind of starts off like a kind of a, a cop comedy kind of thing then drama thriller and then finishes with overall it's a horror movie but it gets more into the horror elements as the film progresses and i will consider it a genre blend for sure because it starts off like kind of like a uh, a comedy and then like a cop drama thriller and then you get all the horror elements coming in it's a very layered film especially with the certain characters i feel like 
that's it, that's one of those movies where at the end of it, it literally like I sat down from it and I had to really think about it, and then I really once it clicked, I was like, this movie, it just immediately became my favorite movie of 2016. I like the original uh, Star Trek uh, Star the Star Wars trilogy. Um, I do appreciate all the other ones, but they just don't have that same. Uh, impact for me. It doesn't resonate quite as much as the original Star Wars trilogy. Um, so, yeah. Hugo Weaving is her uncle. That's awesome. That's what I, initially I was thinking, if there's some kind of relation. Thank you, Jeff Overing. I appreciate that. Uh, at this rate, we're not far from having to add the stipulation uh, the movie when referring to the things. Uh, to things. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, that's, that's very true. There's so many TV series that are, uh, you know, spinning off or uh different one like scream is another one that's really popular i haven't seen slasher uh the tv show i think it's on netflix i think it has a couple seasons now uh people recommended that one to me because i think season two has like a snowy setting so i do want to check that out um uh, in denmark they released star trek discovery one episode each week it worked but i need more episodes yeah absolutely i, I prefer that i feel like even with the netflix show stranger things like all those different ones I wish it was a weekly thing like for Walking Dead and Game of Thrones those kind of ones people like tune in it's like a, an event I, I feel like Netflix is, should do that too um, I haven't seen the Sicario 2 trailer scrolling through um, so yeah I think that's it for because it's it's an hour now so I appreciate you guys tuning in again um, I absolutely love doing these live streams. I would like to do a live stream where we watch a movie together and kind of like react to it. Uh, somebody came up with that idea. I can't claim credit for it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's something cool that I want to do in the future. Um, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates. Happy holidays to those who don't. And I will be... Uh, closing this out now and i'm gonna be watching phoenix forgotten um right here bam because that's what everybody chose and i'm looking forward to watching it uh nicholas r thoughts on melissa mccarthy gaining weight back for the blob remake oh man that's 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 hilarious like i kind of love that um i actually it's funny because the blob was already remade uh, back in the day, I think the remake for that was actually really good. I thought it was actually a horror movie I watched when I was a kid that freaked me out because it did have some good gore effects in there. And uh, it's funny because um, uh, I can't remember her name right now, but the chick from uh, the Saw movies, she was in them, and she was also in Summer School, which is a, a favorite of mine too. Um, I can't remember her name right now; uh, it escapes me. But um, Matt Dillon was in there too. But uh, thank you for tuning in, Forty One Ronin. I I remember know you commented in the last one saying you missed it, but yeah, I like doing these. Um, these live streams to get that instant interaction it's easily accessible for uh doing it on my iphone but uh thank you guys for tuning in cheers to you guys hope you have a great night and if i don't do a live stream uh before the holidays merry christmas happy holidays you guys all rule you guys all rock take care